Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. We are blessed for this morning in our morning devotion. We are going to share the word of God which the Lord has already prepared for us. And our topic this morning is about waiting on the Lord amidst affliction. Waiting on the Lord amidst affliction. We are going to see from Psalm 27, verse 12 to 14. It says, Do not let me fall into their hands, for they, for they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath, they threaten me with violence. Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I am here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. You are going to be blessed through this message. My name is Reverend Robert Ziwa. I serve at St. Paul's Cathedral in South Lorenzo Diocese in Kasese. I'm born again and I'm married. This message has encouraged me this morning. It's my prayer that it will encourage you too. As we start, I pray that we humble ourselves we go into that moment of prayer, then the Lord will speak to us. Heavenly Father, we thank, we thank you. We also invite you that come and be with us. Speak to our souls. Speak to our hearts. Speak to our minds. Speak to our broken hearts. Encourage us and revive us, O oh Father, for the next step that we need to take in our lives. Bless us through your word because your word is life. So, Lord, you speak. We are listening through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'm sharing from this text. I'm going to use two major words. One word is waiting. And the next word is affliction. The word waiting means to look forward expectantly or to stay in place expectation of something staying in a place in expectation of something the word affliction is a cause of persistent pain or distress a cause of persistent pain or distress this is the state where one is being afflicted by something that causes suffering, like illness, hardships, diseases, depression, it could be calamity, or even sometimes being disorder. But all in all this, our word has been so clear. The servant of the Lord David, from Psalm 27, here he is telling us what how we can be patient, how we can wait upon the Lord in those hard times. Many have had the sad experience of being abandoned by their parents. Some have had broken homes. Some have had differences in belief. Others are being perplexed by addictions of drugs, sometimes alcohol. Even you may be also perplexed by problems at your place of work. You might be also being perplexed by psychological isolation where you live a situation that is not giving you hope. Even the adults have the pain that is lingering in them I want to tell you this. God can take that place in our life. The place of suffering, the place of hopelessness, the place of hardships, he can take up that place in your position. He can fill that void that is in you. But also, he can heal 
that kind of brokenness. He can heal that kind of heart that you might be going through. He can direct us to those who may take the role of being our parents. For us, we have to understand that his love is so sufficient for all of our needs. Hallelujah. L remember, David is giving us a great word of promise. In verse 13, Yes, I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm here in the land of the living. When he's speaking about this, the land of living simply means this life, this life you are living in. While I am still living, while you are still living, you need to wait upon the goodness of the Lord. It will at one time happen when you are seeing with your own eyes. David was so obvious going through a trial, but he was confident that in this present life, God would see him through. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to see you through that hard time that you are going through. That hard moment you are facing because this is his promise. If he did it for David, how about you? He's going to do it for you too. David knew from experience what it meant to wait for the Lord. He had been anointed king at an age of 16, but didn't become king until he was 30 years. During the interim time, he had been chased through the wilderness by jealous king Saul. David had to wait on God for the fulfillment of his promise to reign as king of Israel. David had to wait on God. Later, after becoming king, he was chased by his rebellious son called Absalom. Waiting for God is not easy, my brother, my sister. Often it seems that he isn't answering our prayers or doesn't understand the urgency of our situation or our needs. That kind of thinking implies that God is not in control or is not fair, but God is worth waiting for. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you this morning. God is worth waiting for. No matter the delay you may see. Because I told you, if you're waiting, you have to pay the cost of weight of patience, the cost of uh, quietness. You have to pay the cost of uh, looking what the Lord promises and what how things will become. You have to be eager, hopeful. You don't need to lose your hope. You need to be so hopeful. And by the way, you have to be so confident. This is what Paul, uh, uh, David said in verse 13. I am confident. He never minded the situation that surrounded him. He was so much confident. Hallelujah. So, it's my prayer that the promises of the Lord will come to pass in your life, no matter what situation you might be going through. For God is so faithful to fulfill his word. As he says here in Lamentation chapter 3, verse 24 to 26, he says these words. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will wait, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who depend on him, to those who search for him. So it is good to wait quietly for salvation from the Lord. Hallelujah. What does this imply in our life? It is worth waiting upon the Lord. It is worth calling upon him as we continue to realize his promises coming to be fulfilled in our lives. I'm encouraging you this morning, never to lose hope. The Lord is so faithful. He's going to fulfill his word. David was so patient and surely he became a successful king. After all that time, all says he was being hard pressed. You might be the same in your office, in your family, in your business, in your place of work, where you are going. I don't know the kind of situation you are, you are, you are facing, but I want to raise the promises of the Lord unto your life. The Lord will not let you down. 
He's going to get you out of that situation. He's going to bless you with good health. You are going to still see them live with your naked eyes. These things happening, the promises of the Lord happening in your life. Because this is what he has promised. As David waited upon him, though he was being afflicted, but later on, we see the testimony he is giving out. Tomorrow, you are going to give a testimony. The Lord will not let you the way how you are. He's going to bless your life. He's going to cause situations of good life in you happening. He's going to heal your sicknesses. He's going to quicken the situation that it may be uh, delaying to come on your way. He's going to put right that thing that is not right in your life, in your family, in your situation, in your office. The Lord is promising all these to your life. It's my prayer this morning that my brother, my sister, let us learn how to be uh, to wait upon the Lord. He will bless us. He will take care of us. I want to wish you good, good health. I want to wish you the promises of the Lord to be fulfilled in your life. And I want to wish you that you get into that. The situation of waiting upon him in all the situation that you may be going through, his word will stand and his word will do what is right. God bless you. We pray. Father, bless us. Use us as we continue to wait upon you. Amidst all the situations that are hard, but let your promises be yes and amen, as you have promised. In Jesus' name, amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.